area, which was southwest London, uh, near Hampton, Hampton Court, called Hampton Grammar. So we all tried to get into this school. So eight of us got into the school, uh, and it was a great day. And it was also the first day that I went to Wembley Stadium to see England schoolboys play football. I was like 10, 11 years old. Uh, so they had very good education, but in the UK educational system, it changed. Uh, when I was about 14 or 15, grammar schools became comprehensive schools, or they, be, or, they, or they became independent. And independent meant that anyone that came to the school uh, the following year would have to pay. But the ones who were already at the school, um, we didn't have to pay. So we got uh, the best of education for free. That was a positive side. The negative side was that a lot of people in my year at school after the summer had been talking to their mummy and daddy and they started to behave as if they were better than anybody else. Uh, and I just said, listen, you're the same as me. You were clever when you were 11 and that's it. Don't give me big bullshit, you know what I mean? Uh, so I started to rebel at that time. So I should have gone to Oxbridge. Um, I just, I was a na naughty boy. Um, my brain was a little different to theirs. Uh, and then I went and did some very strange things after that. When I was 18, uh, I, I started driving a motorbike around London, delivering parcels when you were paid really good money. Not like Deliveroo today. You were actually paid danger money for what you were doing. Um, and then I worked in a bookmaker's opposite my house. Um, and I got into, into that type of gambling life. Joined William Hill probably about six or seven months later. Used to get two buses to go to Shepherd's Bush, uh, kind of uh, an estate in West London, towards London. Uh, and then in the space of 18 months, I became the manager of that particular shop without any technology or anything, uh, all, all in my brain. I had to, you know, settle so many slips, um, not just 10 pounds to win on Guinness to win Smart City Award. It would be a 10 pence each way, Yankee, six doubles, four trebles, one accumulator, Eight to one at 50 the odds is eight to five. Ten pence at eight to five is 13. 26p at 11 to 10 is 60.52. You know, it was a really, really stressful job. And that's actually quite a dangerous shop as well. But I learned a lot of, man a lot of skills in that shop by managing the people, the, the clientele. Uh, and then I went to Israel to live on the kibbutz. I'd had enough. A friend of ours had gone over there. Uh, a lot of my friends were kind of working class guys. So, you know, there was a lot of unemployment. Um, I didn't know where I fitted, whether I was a grammar boy or a working class boy or a privileged, intelligent boy. I didn't know what I was. So I wanted to go around the world to find out. I went on a kibbutz in Israel for six or seven months. Um, amazing time. Lots of girls, et cetera. Um, and lots of drinking and really, really weird jobs with chickens and tractors and stuff. Uh, spent the summer in Greece, uh, came back, got on the motorbike, delivered some parcels, um, and then went back on the kibbutz, met a girl. And this kind of went on for about 10 years. You know what I mean? I just traveled, went to India many times, all around the world. And as soon as I ran out of money, then I'd come back, get on the motorbike, earn some money. So I had no credit card. You know, I went around the world on 200, 200 pounds, basically, the first time. All types of jobs, you know, everywhere. Um, and then basically to kind of accelerate this, I retrained as a journalist uh, in 1999. So I was, yeah, so I was 38. So I was quite a, an old guy. Um, and I thought that I'd wasted 20 years to my life, but not really. I'd learned a lot of shit in those times, you know, being on my own and seeing the world for myself. And if there's one thing that's happening at the moment, the fact that I can't see the world at the moment is... It's the biggest, it's the worst thing of all. So I was very lucky at that time. The internet was just beginning. Um, I had an idea of what it was, but also meant it was, it was a great chance for me to catch up. You know, so I did a, a three-month course at the London College of Printing, which was legendary. It's a very difficult test to get in. I somehow managed to do so. Um, 75 people a year, three terms, 11 weeks. It's two weeks, two years work in 11 weeks uh, and two weeks you had to get uh, an internship somewhere yourself. You had to, you, to try and get it. Um, and it was for graduates, postgraduates. And I hadn't been to university um, and it meant that I would get a diploma or a kind of mini masters in 11 weeks, 13 weeks. 
Uh, and it meant I kept caught up five years, you know what I mean, in three months. So that was a big thing. Um, and I started working for an IT weekly, tried to understand technology because I hated technology because I, I, I just didn't want anything to do with it. And then off I went, and the last 20 years have been a bit weird. Um, I worked in computing for a year, then I worked for another IT publication, then I went to work in Fleet Street, you know, when the press was at its height as a sub-editor, which was an amazing time. I still love those days. Um, moved down to Brighton, became the website editor of the local newspaper down here. Uh, and then there was a company down here that had just landed the rights to stream the first series of Big Brother, you know. And I knew this was going to be a big deal. So they took me on as their communications director and I had an inside track to the, the forefront of technology. Big Brother, the first series of Big Brother was a big deal, especially in this country where people were watching the internet and not watching TV for the first time. There was one incident when one um, contestant was kicked out. In, well, yeah, he was kicked out of the house, but they stopped recording in the house, you know, so people were, you know, trying, well, what is this? Is it open platform, closed platform? Uh, then I went to work for an incubator, which I suppose is today's equivalent of an accelerator. Uh, and then I got my dad a kid and worked for a games company uh, and realized that the games testing company that I worked for, we needed to do stuff in mobile. Uh, I set up a deal with Vodafone to test every mobile game that went out on Vodafone Live, uh, which was a massive deal at the time. Uh, then went to work for a mobile games publisher in London, but we weren't particularly well funded. We 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 were funded by we were funded because we had the rights, the video rights to the English Premiership outside the UK. The Vodafone had paid a huge amount for it, so this was like 2006, I think. So we had exclusive rights to the Premiership on mobile video in Finland, Holland, Denway. Denmark, sorry, <laughs> Denmark, Norway, the Faroe Islands, and China. So it was the wild, wacky West, you know. It was just crazy, crazy, crazy. But then it looked like there was a recession coming, so I went to, took my wife and five-year-old son to India. We lived in Goa on the beach for two years. Uh, we sold the company when I was away uh, for a, not a, a huge amount of money, but okay. I became a Bollywood film star. I was into big Bollywood movies as a really bad British villain with a stupid moustache and a, as a Russian drug dealer, which is a, a long story. Um, I was burnt to death. But I think what I, I learned then, as people are now learning now, is that that was 2008. And I was working remotely from the beach, from an internet cafe, even from my phone sometimes, whether it was in Goa where I lived, or in the Himalayas, or anywhere, I, I, I could work remotely. It wasn't that difficult. I mean, it wasn't as if I was sitting in my study with my books around me, you know what I mean? It would be a dirty, sweaty mosquito cafe. Um, but that was one, one thing that I, that I realized that if and when we went back to the UK, I wouldn't be getting the train to London. I wouldn't be living that lifestyle of, of up and down and you know not seeing my kid. Um, who I'd spent two years in the sea with just about every day. Um, and then from that point, I suppose, I was I had a p tough time coming home, I think. You know what I mean? It was difficult to get going again. And my feet were still in the, still in the beach, you know, my feet were still in the sea. But I set up a, a small agency, a PR agency called Mob76, M-O-B-76, <laughs> Monty of Brentford 76, which was my football graffiti when I was a 15-year-old very childish, um, uh, and then started to work with some companies, started to also write for The Telegraph, who I used to write for when I was in India, um, and just build it all up, really. Started collecting. I wrote, I wrote for Wired. I wrote for Newsweek. I was a columnist at The Telegraph for nearly four years, and I was basically, Dennis, just building up my network, you know, to, to, to go higher and higher and higher and, and to test myself against people who were smarter than me, um, and this went hand in hand for, for a few years until a couple of years ago where I had a good year. I opened up the stock exchange one day, went to Buckingham Palace that evening. Um, all types of invitations to the Houses of Parliament. House of, I just got to a point where, you know what, this is, I've, I've gone as far as I can. 
I'd also started on a speaking career. I'd interviewed Steve Wozniak in Beirut in front of 10,000 people. Did Steve again in Vienna uh, and started to have a career in that respect. And I think it was in October, November of last year, 2019, uh, Kim Kardashian in Armenia. And again, I thought, well, if you, she's not only the most famous woman in the world, she was very polite, um, doing some good work. Uh, and by all accounts, whatever you, want, whatever you think of her, she is a female billionaire entrepreneur. You know what I mean? There, there's, th- th- that's, that's the truth. It doesn't matter how she got there or what, what, whatever way she did it. She's certainly an amazing entrepreneur. Um, then someone knocked on my door. Did, did I want to come a, become a venture partner in a, in a fund called 7BC, uh, Beyond Continent, uh, 7BC.VC. So that began, began in earnest in October and then started to go to have meetings at the Bank of England. Uh, and all that stuff. I was still keeping the agency going because I still need to pay the school fees and the money. Uh, And then, unlike the financial crisis in 2008, which I saw coming, this pandemic I didn't see coming. Completely off guard, really bad timing to join a VC, you know, just when a pandemic hits hits the earth or hits the planet. Um, So we have to be a bit agile. You know, I lost probably some some serious money and consultancy fees that were agreed for 2020, uh, which is, you know, a, a setback, but hopefully just a setback. Uh, but I think the brain that I had when I was 11 years old, uh, which wasn't really catered for by my education because I was quite creative, this type of situation is very good for someone like me because I'm used to thinking of my feet. I self-isolated in India for two years during the financial crisis. I've, I don't go to London. I, you know, I live in the Sussex Downs in the countryside. I'm quite happy on my own. As you can see, I, I, I love reading you know, and learning and knowledge, and I'm, I'm very happy to do that by myself. Um, but it, it's a bit of a strange time, so we set up this podcast, maybe similar to what you're doing, Dennis. We'd love to have you on our show, by the way. Um, we call it Block Speak, as in... BS, bullshit, ha, 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 um, which is a, you know, leading characters in the blockchain and the crypto space. I mean, I, I had some interest in crypto. I had some money stolen last year, about $30,000, so I know quite a lot about it. I've written about it for the BBC, interviewed many people in this space, you know, on stage and all that stuff. I'm very interested in blockchain. Oh. The economist says uh, you, can, you can only use the blockchain when it comes to Bitcoin any other time it's blockchain. So there's something maybe now that you didn't know that <laughs> you, didn't, you know now that you didn't know before. So that's it really, you know, blockspeak.io if anyone's interested. Um, we've got some great guests coming on uh, and we're doing this. I'm doing this in my study, you know, it's this, you just have to adapt, I think. <laughs>